To be able to run Jumpstart Pro Android, you're going to need a device or an emulator. Now, thankfully, if you don't have a device, you can use the emulators directly from within Android Studio. So let's go ahead and set up a emulator inside of Android Studio. And to do that, you're going to come over to the window over here called Device Manager, and you'll open the Device Manager. You likely won't have all of these devices in here. This will be empty. I have already created multiple other devices. However, what you'll want to do is then go ahead and create them by hitting the plus sign and hit create virtual device. Now from here, you're gonna be given a bunch of different options inside of here. These options are gonna be ranging based upon the SDKs that you have installed. So if you want a recent phone, you're probably gonna, I recommend choosing a regular Pixel phone. These are the phones that ship from Google. It kind of gives some of the best experiences out there. Now you are running on Android, so there's going to be thousands of different devices that are out there across the world, but we are just running an emulator here, so let's go ahead and set one up. So here, in this case, let's go ahead and set up a Pixel 9 uh, and the Pro and so forth. You can see the differences are the resolution uh, and the density. This is the screen density. So we'll just choose Pixel 9 and then we'll hit Next. And then from here, you can choose which SDK level you want to have installed on this device. Now, remember, if you go to apilevels.com, you can choose whichever one you would like. I have API 34. I have some other emulators like you use API 28 or 29. I'm just going to stick with 34. If you don't have it, you can click this little download button and it will download the image for that actual SDK. Now, these files can be large, so it will take some time if you have a slow internet connection. So hit next. And then from here, you can give your device a name. This can be any name you'd like. You could you can call it anything you want. I'm gonna leave the default here just because it makes it easier for me to see in my device manager. You can scroll down here. Uh, there's a bunch of different options you can choose. You want it to start up in portrait or landscape. Maybe your application you're developing is a landscape type of application always. So you just want it to just start in landscape. It's easier to save you some time. And then you can also do some advanced settings inside of here, like adjusting the internal storage. Maybe your application needs to store a lot of files, so you need to adjust the internal storage to make it you know, four gigs or eight gigs or anything like that. I'm gonna leave the default options here selected, and then we're going to hit finish. Now we have our emulator over here, the Pixel 9 API 34. And to start our emulator, it's pretty easy. All we're gonna do is hit the play sign here. And what we'll see is that it opens up the running devices tab, it has a little green icon in it, and down the bottom we'll see starting AVD. This can take some time. Again, depending upon the resources of your actual machine, the device can take a little while to boot. Now here we're seeing it boot up, saying it's connecting to the emulator, and then in a second we will see an emulator actually pop up onto the screen here, just as if it was a real device, and we had a nice device frame here. Now there are controls for this emulator, and these are the controls up here. We have the power button. This is gonna be our volume up, our volume down. We can rotate the screen left, we can rotate it right. This is our back button. This is basically our home button. A lot of Android devices back in the day used to have those three buttons. And so if you wanna simulate that back or the home or the recent or now known as overview, you can do that here. This will allow you to access some device shortcuts. You can take a screenshot, which is useful for a lot of sharing things. You can record the screen. So maybe if you're trying to replicate a bug or show somebody how it works, uh, there's snapshots too, which we'll get into. You can get into another time to help speed up the, the booting of the emulator for certain things and then various different options. So now you have an emulator that's up and running. You can interact with it. You can open you know, various things such as Chrome. You can interact, you know, can add an account here. You can back swipe like you would normally back swipe. You can go into the various settings, you can drag it down and everything is just like a regular Android device inside of here. And then when you're done, you can just, when you wanna turn off the emulator, you can just go ahead and close out the emulator here and it will automatically get rid of the emulator and free up your resources. And that's how you create an emulator, emulator in Android Studio. Now there is one really important thing to mention regarding the emulator and how it connects to the local environment on your machine so you can figure out how you're going to interact with your Rails application. Now, if your application is running on port 3000 for Jumpstart Pro, which is what we have running right here, as you can see, it's running a localhost 3000, which is the typical port where Jumpstart Pro is going to be running. And we can see it, we get the login screen, all the kind of stuff we have here. How are you going to access 
localhost from within this environment. If we go to localhost here, we'll hit use without using an account, and then we'll say localhost 3000, and we will see that we do not get a connection, and that is because Android is its own operating system, and, is, and localhost to itself does not find anything at 3000. So there is a local loopback interface that's built into the emulator that will talk directly to the actual machine that's running the emulator. And you can see that over inside of our build files here. This is actually set up for us, but by default, it's already here, but I'll show you where it's at in our build files. We're gonna go into the app, and we're gonna go into build.gradle.kts, and then we'll look inside of our staging, excuse me, our debug, build type here and we'll go through the build files in another video but what we see here is this url here 10.0.2.2.3000 so 10.0.2.2 is the local loopback interface for the android emulator so if i type in 10.2.2 excuse me 10.0.2.2 port 3000 we will now get the jumpstart pro instance that's currently running on this maxwell machine that's running right now so that's important to note. And inside of our Android application, when we are working with Jumpstart Pro or whatever Rails app that you do have that's working with Jumpstart Pro Android, this for our development environment and our debug environment for the app, we have a point, because for this emulator, we're having it point to the actual loopback interface. You'll also notice that there is a mention here, if you're using a physical device, you'll probably want to use something like NGROC or local tunnel so you can create a accessible API. So you can actually access the APIs and so forth from within the actual device itself. So this is very important just for the emulator we do need to use the local loopback interface of 10.0.2.2, and then you can access your local running instance of Jumpstart Pro.